If you want to add volume to your workout, get a little bit more of a pump, add different angles. Machines allow you to do this easier than free weights because they're less stressful on the body. They just are. Like if I go and do a back machine workout with three different exercises, even if I'm doing compound lifts or whatever, it's just not as taxing on the body. I'm going to recover faster. Uh, it's it's going to be shorter recovery period. So if I'm like, you know, if I'm training hard and I'm pushing my body limit and I want to add an additional five sets to my routine, I could either do two sets of a free weight exercise or one set, or I could add five sets of machines, yeah. which has some value. All right, real quick. Here's the giveaway. Maps Aesthetic. This is our bodybuilder maps program. One of you will get it for free. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you. You'll get free access to Maps Aesthetic. One more thing. The sale that we're running right now, the Maps Power Bundle, which is Maps Power Lift combined with Maps Strong, retails at $300. The sale is $79.99 for that bundle. So one payment, $79.99, Maps Strong, Maps Power Lift. It ends in 24 hours. So when we drop this episode, you have 24 hours to take advantage. After that, we're not going to bring the sale back probably for an entire year. So if you're interested, head over to mapsmarch.com. Here comes the rest of the show. I got a DM the other day from someone that uh, kind of misunderstands our position on exercises and exercise equipment. So, you know, in the past we've been, uh, you know, mischaracterized as like being anti-cardio, which we're not tremendous value there. But another one that I get is that we're anti-machine, mm. that we don't like machines at all, that they're a waste of time, that there's no value, which is totally not true. Uh, at all machines yeah. have a place i love robots and, <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that not that kind of machine not only do they have their place i believe there are times when they're superior yes so yes. it's just uh, you know it just depends on the context i think that's uh, anything we say I, this is just social media world now like you say a statement and then someone's going to take it out of context and then oh i can't believe you guys yeah. are anti-cardio no. how can you be anti-machines or it's like no we're we're trying to teach the audience uh the yeah. the hierarchy of things and yep. many times uh free weights are far more superior for most people but there are always exceptions to the rule yeah. and there's mm -hmm. absolutely times where I had clients where we spent more time on machines than we did free weights. Yeah, so yeah. When, when you're talking to the average person, it's usually the conversation usually has to go around that, right? You're using, you're depending too much on machines. You're not getting the value you can get out of free weights. Um, but that doesn't, again, like you said, Adam, that does not mean there's no value. And in some cases, machines are actually superior. Uh, you know, I, I find tremendous value with machines in c certain circumstances. Um, now, I, I think we should go back a little bit and kind of talk uh, just very briefly on the history of, uh, of equipment. Obviously, the first forms of resistance training equipment or strength training were free weights. People lifted heavy things. Uh, dumbbells and barbells and kettlebells, actually, was what dumbbells used to look like. That's what people used first. Machines came a little bit later, and they were an attempt to create something superior to weights uh, in terms of results and safety. And so you saw them start to invent things. And back in the day, there weren't big machine manufacturers. In fact, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you know, uh, Joe Gold, who started Gold's Gym, most of the equipment that they had in Gold's Gym, he made. This is how he became. Oh, so I, so it, it was, was, I thought Arthur Jones was the first. Was Arthur he, Jones Nautilus created Nautilus equipment. and that yeah. was the first, that was one of the first, first like company. Commercial ones. Yeah. Okay. So who, do you know who was responsible for like the first machines? I don't know the very first machines, but I do know Joe Gold was known for the machines that he co-made mm -hmm. and put in his gyms. So like low cable pulley row and a cable crossover wow. and, and he would design them, put them together, put them into gyms. And this, obviously gave him an advantage over other gyms at the time, which there wasn't much competition. Well, also too, I mean, with the rise of bodybuilding, wasn't it? The focus of it was how can we create um, an exercise machine that can really help to kind of refine and target these muscle groups? Because like that, it was starting to kind of segment down to, I want to build and develop my delts, you know, a little more specifically. I want to, you know, kind of hyper-focus on certain areas of my body more. And then, you know, as a result of that, they started to get it like, um, innovate and, and create a lot of these yeah. types so of machines. I, I thought that didn't happen until later. I was under the impression that the original introduction to machines, to the general population, was primarily for like rehab and, and physical therapy. It was mm -hmm. designed to be uh, a, a safer way to train. 
and that was the the original introduction. That to was the, when they, that's how they were. Um, I guess maybe first broadly used, but commercially it was um, like Arthur Jones Nautilus equipment. Um, right it was, when it was more popularized with the general yeah. public. Oh, look, Doug pulled up some really old uh, machine pictures. <laughs> now, and, and I think these are the 1940s and 50s, and maybe even a little bit before. The thing is, though, these were not widely used at all. Now, right. now to be fair, neither were free weights. But right. even among the population of people that use free weights, machines were extremely rare. Like, well, you saw gyms with kettlebells, ropes, yes. and yeah, Indian clubs and things like that, where it was more of like a gymnasium where the, everybody was climbing on ladders and doing things like that, like way back in the 20s, 30s, yeah. 40s. Actually, do you ever have you ever seen videos of? Uh, some of the first popular weight loss machines. Yeah, the yeah they the, shake the, the hell out of your. It's like your, a your like hand, a, a handles, like a conveyor belt thing wrapped around your waist. You know, my it, grandma owned one. No way. I swear to God, when we were kids, we and I don't know where they what they did with this. In fact, I should. You ask know what them. he's talking about, right, Doug? That conveyor oh, yeah, belt yeah, looking thing that yeah, we, right. And it it's the, the famous sh- commercial. I don't know if it's Maxwell or it has the guy with the mm. goggles on and the uh, helmet, the leather helmet, and he's like this big fat guy and it's like shaking and then yeah. a cannonball hits him oh that's oh, right i that's don't okay. remember that yeah, yeah so so uh my grandma had one and i remember you turned it on exactly what it was it was like a, a canvas kind of belt and it went yeah. da, 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 da. and if you put it around your waist i think the theory was it shook the fat off your body <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they also had these shake it out of you. they it's also had a nasty ro- rash <laughs> they, they also had these roller machines so you would stand oh, yeah. And it would have these rollers and they would roll up and down your thighs or up and down your, and it was like to smooth out that. your fat. Like if you were a piece of clay, I guess <laughs> <laughs> it was Saji or whatever. It was like pretty interesting. Spread. I found these vintage photos and they're from the 1800s. Oh yeah. So wow. there was this uh, guy named Gustav Zander or Zander uh, from Stockholm. And this was back in the, you know, 1865. And you can see some of these things are fairly uh, legit machines. Some wow. of them are kind of crazy, but for example, this one, look at that. That's it's a curl like, machine. It's a curl machine. Yeah. Now, and now again, these were, I mean, free weights were unpopular. This is even more like nobody had access to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Super novel. Maybe yeah. Doug, I, did, I, did, up, I actually did not know this existed back then. Maybe Doug, you could look up commercial gym equipment, like first popular commercial gym equipment. So well, that's Ar- definitely Arthur Jones. Well, he, what he did was Arthur Jones went the performance muscle building route and he became somewhat popular through his Colorado experiment, which I brought him out, brought up on the show before. Yeah, yeah. He took Casey Viator, who at the time, super genetically gifted bodybuilder. I think he won Mr. Universe or America, which back then was a big bodybuilding competition at the age of like 18. And Casey Viator had come to him, totally deconditioned, lost lots of muscle. He had an illness. I don't remember what it was. And Arthur Jones said, I'm going to train you just purely on Nautilus equipment. And we're going, and he also had other people in there. And we're going to look at your results throughout the process. Now, he also employed this super high intensity training technique where he would train you to failure and beyond, very low volume, but it was like balls of the wall type crazy. Anyway, the results that people got were insane, still disputed today. I forgot how much muscle Casey Vider gained in a month. It was like, it sounds like impossible, but nonetheless, that kind of got things a little popular. And then, in, in, in still in the 70s, you didn't have a lot of bodybuilders using machines except for maybe a low cable pulley row and maybe like cable crossover. Otherwise, they didn't use machines. The 80s, you started to see more machines. And a lot of it had to do with the commercialization of, of gyms. So you go to a gym and machines looked sleek and advanced. Then, of course, they used machines to attract women, which were, uh, that's a big portion of the consumer population. Hey, these aren't going to make you bulky mm-hmm. like bodybuilders use these machines. Were they a big consumer back then? Women, are, they they were a big consuming base, consumer base that gyms were not tapping into. And oh, so, that's what you mean by that. Yeah. I thought you meant like there was they were a big consumer within gyms no, already. And I'm like, no, it, that's it, what kind of started to attract. There's right? a lot of things that played they a used role. Used to put in, purple and pink mats. Exactly. That, so, so stupid. It, well, I mean, the aerobics classes exploded. That yeah. was a lot of women. Because I mean, it, you know, they were smart. They looked at the consumer base and said, "We're just attracting dudes. We're not going to make much money." There's a lot of reasons why gyms took off and became a, a successful, potential successful business model. But that was one of them. It's like we were able to attract women. Uh, you know, to our facilities and the ones that did that well did the best. Um, and so that's kind of how machines came into the fray and um, and more and more people started using them. But I do, before we get into why or when machines are better than free weights, we should talk about why just quickly free weights, we often praise them above uh, machines. Now for me, 
one of the main reasons why I tend to advocate for free weights more often is the carryover that you get from the strength that you get in the gym with free weights carries over more so to the real world mm -hmm. than machines. And mainly because free weights, when you're moving things or lifting things in the real world, it's always free. You're never lifting something on a track or with a cable. It's always a couch, a box, your kid, and free weights are more like that mm -hmm. than machines are. And you see more carryover. Like if you get stronger with a barbell squat or an overhead press, you're going to see that carry over the real world more than you will. You yeah, know, it'd be nice if things in the real world were nicely balanced and followed a track and, and predictable <laughs> and yeah. all those types of things. But in reality, I mean, your body has to do all kinds of things to pull off some of these movements to be able to stabilize, to not rotate, uh, to get the action out of the muscle, yep. to lift. Um, and so it is a it is a different experience and it is something that's very valuable in terms of translating towards real world strength and then also like athletic pursuits. But, uh, I mean, machines definitely fit, uh, a gap that that's there in terms of being able to add volume, apply more safe ways of loading, you know, that type of thing. Did you, did you guys know what like was the first like, you know, machine that got really, really popular of all the machines? Like, was there like a leg, like what did the leg press come? And then that like kind of blew everybody's mind because we're looking at stuff that goes all the way back yeah. in 1800. And that obviously wasn't popular. It wasn't even popular in the forties and fifties. And then all of a sudden right. Arthur Jones comes, starts to build them in the gyms and stuff. They get really popular Were there like a couple of them that really I started can, to take off. I can only base it off of what I know from the bodybuilding routines of the seventies. That's when machines started to kind of come in and it was lap pull down, low cable, pulley row. Uh, cable crossovers were the most commonly used machines among leg press, probably right. Like leg press is a little bit, but that started coming later. I mean, bodybuilders in the seventies all squatted. I mean, they all did barbell squats a on, on a regular basis. What's up, Doug? Yeah, one of the early ones is the Smith machine. Yeah, back in the nineteen fifties, uh, mm. was based it was born because of Jack Lalane's assertion that some form of machines was ne needed to safeguard members. From injury. Oh, Jack Lane. Yeah, and then the other one is this guy named uh, I believe it's Zinkin. Well, while you're on the Smith machine, I have I've said something that I don't I haven't fact checked myself for about, and I had I was told, uh, or I remember either being told or reading a long time ago that originally Smith machines uh, were designed for upper body only. Interesting. Oh, oh I don't yeah. know. We'll see for the reasons Jacqueline that you says. said, exactly what you said, but the the original intent was purely for upper body. Hmm. Interesting. I know Jack Lane had some of the first gyms. In fact, he had a couple here in the Bay Area, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Yeah, he did. I, I think it was called Grecian. I think that might have been one of his gyms. I don't know if you guys have heard that. Here's uh, him on a Smith machine uh, right look, there. Look at that. Doing a squat. Now, Jack Lane is, I mean, he's the godfather of, of fitness. That's Jack Lane right there? Training. Yes. Oh, that's a young Jack Lane right there. Wow. By, by the way, if anybody's never heard of him, look him up. In his 50s, he's he set champion. a world record in push ups and pull ups. I think it was 1,000 each. That nobody touched for decades. Yeah. In his 70s, he swam from Alcatraz, San Francisco to Alcatraz. Pulling the boat with his teeth. Pulling 70 people yeah. on to on boat, on, on <laughs> rowboats with his teeth, hands and feet shackled. And it's on video, by the way. You can look yeah. this up. So and great. See, it's and so insane. Another name that comes up is Harold Zinken, who created the Universal Machine. Oh, is, there you go. That's yeah. the one that was in every, that's the high school. Is that gym. the cable one? That yes. Has, or, or the one that has the yes. seated row, the military press. Well, the, universal. So on each oh, side, there's a yeah, station. Yeah, I do you remember do like that. a circuit. That was at my high school. Those so. were so crappy. They were so <laughs> crappy. They're the worst machines of all time. They were so dumb. <laughs> so bad. But yeah, so the carryover is one of the main reasons. Because, you know, consider this. Like, we all trained, for the most part, I'd say at least... 90%, maybe correct me if I'm wrong with you guys, but 90% of our clients were everyday people. Yeah, They weren't fitness fanatics or bodybuilders or athletes. And everyday people, they like to look good. They want to be fit, but they don't want to be strong in the gym and then weak in the real world. Like that's a, that's a terrible, uh, it's almost like a waste of time. Like, okay, I'm strong in the gym. That's nice. But then when I go lift the couch or a box, I hurt myself or I'm not strong. Like I want that to carry over into the real world because uh, I don't know about you guys, but when my clients would come back and say, man, Sal, I was moving and I felt so strong while I was moving. Or, you know, I had a female client once tell me that she put her suitcase in the overhead compartment for the first time. Mm -hmm. And she was, she felt so good about that. Or, you know, I was playing with my kids at the park and I felt so stable. I haven't felt like that in a long time. So free weights just give you that carryover. And it's mainly because the world is made up of 
free objects. And so when you're moving objects in the real world, um, it's more closely related to free weights, which is what makes it, uh, in my, you know, my strong opinion, one of the reasons why you get such good carryover. Yeah. You know, the next thing um, I would say is, is this now, and this is what's in, this is an interesting part of free weights. We, we talk a lot about safety with machines. Here's where machines can get dangerous. And I've seen people hurt themselves on machines because of this. When you're using a machine, you have to follow the path of the machine. So if you're taller or shorter or your range of motion is compromised for some particular reason and you're pushing or pulling or twisting on a machine that's on a track, you have to follow the track. And if that track is inappropriate for your body, that becomes a problem. Free weights, I could train someone that's three feet tall, seven feet tall, someone who's got long arms, short arms and whatever. The free weights follow the person. And that makes free weights super valuable. And probably one of the reasons why free weights in bands are more often used in uh, with physical therapy um, than, you know. Well, I think this, that's the most valid critique of the Smith machine, in my opinion. Mm. Like, I mean, there's a, we've talked about the Smith machine before and using it for upper body, not so bad because you can do things like a yeah. military press or something where you're pretty much staying in the same path. But doing something like a squat or a lower body exercise, like, you know, your, your spine doesn't look like that. You're not going straight up and down. Yeah. And so, and you can't, the like when you do a free weight squat, the, the bar path, yes, we're, we're, we're targeting it to be as close to straight up and down as possible, but the, it's not realistic. You, it's unnatural. Yeah. Yeah. So you end up uh, forming your body into an unnatural position just to follow the track. Uh, and that's been a big critique of mine of it. And also too, it's just, I mean, from just, kind of one of those perspectives of it's a lot easier in terms of like a, like a bench press because you're taking away a lot of the stabilizing uh, mechanisms you just have that to push. are involved. You just push. Yeah. And so, which is great, uh, you know, for somebody that um, might have issues or injuries or things that are inhibiting that from happening. Yeah. But um, at the same time, like you have to know, what you're what you're working with and, and and the the reason why you're doing it is everything. Yeah, the 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 two leg exercises that I would not often, but I I may have I've done a few times with a Smith machine would be a modified squat, look more like a hack squat because of the bar path. Yeah. You're under the bar, your feet are out in front of you. Yeah. So you're going straight up and down with your back, your feet are in front so it's more like a hack squat. And then the other one would be a stationary lunge because again, the bar goes up and down. And sometimes I would use it to teach someone how to lunge and they would hold on to the Smith machine for balance uh, when doing it. But like a squat or like, like try deadlifting on this. You can't deadlift yeah, on a, yeah. on a Smith machine. Well, just you work. can, it's just, <laughs> it's not going to be a deadlift. Yes. Right? I mean, people do. Well. There's a lot of people that do that. So, I mean, I always feel for the um, planet fitness people. There's a lot of uh, yeah. planet fitness does not have any uh, barbells. Like yeah. that. So you can't just go over and do deadlift. There's not like a deadlift mm -hmm. platform there or anything. So, you know, you have people that are even following maps programs that have a planet fitness. And then, so they've had to make that modification and use the Smith machine. Yep. So yeah, I'm, I've never been a real fan of that. You know, as a kid, I was I'm tall. I was six, three. Right. So I remember going to the gym and not uh, fitting, right? Yeah, and like the uh, you know, like some gyms have like um, where the, the, where the it'd be like colored where my knee joint and where my ankle, and so you can kind of so you can kind of line it up, and nothing ever lined up right for me because I just didn't have that average body type that the machines were I, were built for. I remember talking to mm -hmm. oh I can't remember his name. He was one of the founders of Hammer Strength, and we were talking about machines. And Hammer Strength took the market by storm. Another another. Uh, you know, machine plate loaded. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed hammer strength. Machines. Well, what, what, what they did with hammer strength is they tried to they combine. They, they tried to make free weight with the machine kind of. Yeah, they tried to make it emulate free weights in many ways, and it became very popular. But I remember talking to him, and he said, "You know, here's the deal with machines. A lot of people don't know this, but they're designed for a five nine male who weighs around 170 pounds." That makes a lot of sense. I was going to bring that up because, like, I'd have clients that were a bit sh on the shorter side or, you know, over six foot. And it was just like such a pain to try and conform their body to try and make it work. It's just, regardless of how many notches they had to kind of pull the pads out to help you yeah. stabilize, oh, it was just, it didn't work. There's uh, There were machines that have to hand the bar to a client because they couldn't get to it because they were yeah. too small or too short. Um, so yeah, that, that becomes an issue. 
Um, and again, they're designed for the average person. So there's a bit of limitation there. And if you're outside of that, then what happens is the machine is designed to be perfect for a particular size. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes less and less perfect uh, because you, your size doesn't necessarily uh, fit to it. And so this is why, again, like for example, like some of the worst ones, like one of the worst ones is you ever do the seated tricep yeah. extension, yeah, yeah. which if you fit in the machine, I'm gonna tell you something, it's a great tricep exercise. Yeah. Rarely do I ever fit. My arms are too <laughs> arms big. Are like way up here. I'm getting in here. there and it's all weird. Shoulders are too broad to fit in the thing. Yeah, yeah, so it just didn't work. But you know, with free weights, it doesn't matter how long my arms are or how wide my shoulders are. It follows my body. And so used properly, it just it's, it can be more appropriate. The other thing that free weights give you that you can't really get from machines is the the stability component. Totally. Which, you know, I would make the case, especially as a trainer training a new client would make the argument. And this is where probably most of our argument comes from of why it free weights are so superior yeah, yeah. because most clients that we train, the very kind of first phase you're in is stability. Just learning how to balance. Yeah. Stabi stability is kind of the foundation uh, of programming for clients. And so they have to, they have to learn that first. And you, if you go straight into machines, you don't get that. And I think that is a, a, a very limiting factor for a lot of people starting out. It's a great point because, um, you know, the thought process for a trainer initially when you have a beginner is that you want to go with the safest right. type of a workout and, you know, machines do provide that. However, it's not addressing a lot of these glaring issues that you're seeing uh, in their movement patterns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, free weights are much better at that in terms of like having to uh, face those types of challenges for, for their muscles and for their joints. Uh, and it's critical that you do that then, because then we build upon that and we get stronger, totally. more muscular. And if we don't address those imbalances and issues and dysfunction, it's going to really result in a, a bigger issue down the road. Would you guys make the case that you actually increase your risk of injury by getting strong without addressing stability? Of first course. Two? Yep. Like if yeah, because now you've got more force capability right. with yes. the same or slightly better or even worse stability than before. Yeah. So now the risk of injury, I mean, if, like, like, let me put it this way. If I had the stability of a 15 year old kid with my ability to, to produce force, I am going to hurt myself. Well, it's like having a, uh, you know, a terrible steering or suspension and then giving a car an, an additional extra 200, 200 horsepower, yeah, 200 horsepower yeah. and thinking that it, it's not going to increase the totally. risk, right? So totally. I, I remember hard. learning this, like I, I, so, you know, when you first become a trainer, I'm sure you guys remember this. There's a lot of lessons you learn because of the mistakes you make with your yeah, clients. Definitely. I had a kid. So I had this kid that I trained, this 15 year old kid. It was one of my first clients and I'll never forget him because he eventually became a personal trainer. But anyway, I thought he's a kid. And if you've ever trained a teenager, they have the worst stability, especially overhead yeah. pressing. Like and it, part of it's because they're young. Part of it's is they're, they're growing so fast. They're like, you know, clumsy puppies. Yeah, you ever just, seen a, yeah like young giraffes. Yeah, and and you know, it, you, you have them try and hold a, the lightest dumbbell overhead that they can definitely lift, but they can't balance it. It's like all over the place. No. Uh -huh. So I had this kid do machine overhead presses, and we did it for like two months, and his strength went up quite a bit. And then I thought to myself, now it's safe to go to dumbbells because I mistakenly thought stronger on the machine. Uh -huh. Then we moved to dumbbells. We went and we went light. I remember we went light to dumbbells and I luckily caught it. He almost dropped a dumbbell on his face <laughs> because he could push it up, but he didn't have the stability. This, so he went like yep. this. Especially and then, at the end range like that. Yeah. Too, and right? his, I remember it went like this and he was going to drop it on his head and I caught it real quick. And I remember thinking like, man, you could yeah, like, press. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember how much it was. It was something like you could press a hundred pounds on the machine, but you know, these 10 pound dumbbells are going to drop on your head. And then I remember thinking like, oh, he can push it. Because if I held his wrist, so he didn't fall, he could put, probably lift twice as much. Uh -huh. yeah. But it was a lack of stability. So, and that's what that's what free weights uh, give you. Along, so whatever you lift with a free weight, as you get stronger, you're also going to build the stability to be able to do that exercise because it's free. Yeah. So that's the that's the thing. And then the last one, this one's the controversial part. Uh, but we we make this argument all the time because of the factors we listed before, and because of factors we don't yet understand, we don't ha yet haven't yet identified. Free weights tend to build more muscle and as a side effect, tend to burn more body fat. And this, there's stuff I can, there's reasons I can explain why and then there's reasons I can't. Like it's hard for me to explain why a barbell squat or a barbell bench press or a barbell row 
just in my experience training clients and myself and training lots of people, just makes people stronger and build more muscle right. than the same amount of volume with machines. Well, it's just, they're more demanding. I mean, it would be my answer to that. Well, mine would be the stability and the muscle recruitment yeah. point. You I mean, think that's part of it. But if you have someone stand it, on like a, it's a, a louder, wobbly board yeah. with more instability, it's still not as good. It's like, there's a, there's gotta be like a, like a, like a, a, a point where like a bell curve diminishing yeah. return. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I get that. That makes sense. Cause it's not all about, I mean, I guess that's why we made that. We, all of us as trainers, when we were younger, made that stability mistake, right? When we learned like the importance of the went too far. Yeah. went too far. And then that's where the, the returns start to diminish, you know? Yeah. Well, in terms of the instability, it's that's, if you address that and you get your muscles to, to respond, uh, sort of subconsciously, you know, going forward, like they get stronger, they know they need to like respond. And, and now you're adding in the free weights and you're adding more load, you get a louder response. You recruit more muscle fibers. Yeah. And so and, that, that has to play a factor. Yeah. And, and again, there's stuff that's unknown because I've seen exercise scientists debate this and they've got good studies and, and explanations as to why there's no difference. But when they do polls, and I've seen these polls many times, well, they'll ask strength coaches and they'll say, which one's going to produce more muscle and more strength? And it's like 80% always say free weights tend to. And I, that's my experience as well, generally speaking. But again, this does not mean that machines aren't valuable. And this doesn't mean that machines are sometimes right. more valuable than free weights. And that's uh, that's where I think we should go. Because again, I want people to know the true, like the truth about all this stuff so they can apply it to themselves. Well, the first thing we can start off with is uh, the same thing that makes them weak also makes them strong, right? The, the, the fact that it, it's so stable and you don't challenge stability yeah. mm -hmm has tremendous value when you need that, right? Totally. So example, and that's why I thought it was physical therapy when they first came into first came into the scene was when you had an injury, somebody injured something, let's say you had, you know, you broke your femur or, you know, or something wrong with the hip and like you're doing exercises, you can't do like a, a starting, rehabbing that person, putting them on a barbell squat no. will be tremendously dangerous, but yeah. putting them on a lying leg curl where everything is in a fixed position yeah. or a leg extension, like that's way safer. A knee would have been a better example, right? If someone tore their ACL or MCL, yeah. you know, putting well, them on a leg extension, you would do for well, extended along period those of time. Lines, before. Let's go exercise to exercise. So I'm going to illustrate this, this point right here is because the less stability in some cases makes it safer. So let's go leg extension. I could theoretically do a free weight leg extension. I could, I could strap a dumbbell to my leg, to my foot and do a leg extension. But now let's say I'm dealing with someone who, like Adam said, just had, I don't know, one of his lateral ligaments on his knee operated on. So it's not so stable laterally. Um, maybe some patella issues are going on, but we're rehabbing them. What I don't want is any potential for twisting or for lateral instability with that. All I'm trying to do is strengthen their quad. Mm -hmm. So a dumbbell strapped to my foot, even though I'm mimicking the same exercise, right? I'm still doing a leg extension because the side to side is not controlled. That's going to limit me the hell out of me through that recovery process. Yeah. Whereas if I put them on a leg extension, there is no yeah. issues with the lateral stability. It's all extend and, 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 and flex. And in that case, it makes it you know much safer. Um, same thing could be true for even an overhead press. If I'm trying to get someone to like, I've worked with clients who've had frozen shoulder, which is really annoying yeah. to work through same. and can be quite tedious. And part of that process is getting them to move through full range of motion first. And we can't do that when there's stability stuff to have to worry about. So sometimes I've even had people you know, where they hold on to a machine and I lift it for them and they just hold on. I'm just trying to get their shoulder to track properly. Right. If, I, if they're stabilizing, it ain't happening. They're frozen. Everything's in, in a you bad want it position. You in a straight line too. So that way uh, it's controlled. And, and because of, of an issue like that, and I dealt with the same thing, it, you know, you are trying to increase very incrementally uh, new angles of range of motion to, totally. to gain access to. So uh, you got to be very meticulous and, and, you know, get rid of some of those other variables there that's going to kind of twist and, and push it to the side to side because it's just not in that uh, capability yet. Yeah. Or what if you want to work on uh, scapular retraction, right? You want to work on someone's ability to pull their shoulders back, to work on the posture, but they have a low back injury. You, you, what are you going to do with, with free weights? A barbell row? A dumbbell row? Yeah, you could use a bench to support yourself, but look, I've worked with people with back injuries, having them lay any way prone, even if they're supported sometimes still is not a good idea. Whereas with the machine, they can sit upright. 
the pad is in front of their chest, so there's no gravity adding to the resistance pulling them forward, mm -hmm. and they just sit there and stabilize and focus on you know scapular retraction. So in those cases, um, machines are just safer for the lack of stability, which was also the strength, right? Right, right. Free weights had. I mean, it also has the benefits of being able to uh, isolate, which is kind of similar to that, right? Yeah. Is to be able to isolate a specific area. Well, so. here's where bodybuilders love it. Yeah. Because if you're a bodybuilder and you're trying to add more volume to a target muscle, you're also playing this balancing act of overtraining and not adding more volume and work to the rest of the body. So, you know, I could do a, you know, overhead press standing, which is a, still a press, but man, I'm standing, I'm activating lots of different muscles. You know, I have to stabilize. I'm already teetering on overtraining because I'm adding a lot of volume. Or I could do a seated overhead press where everything's already stable for me. And now I could just target more of the volume to the, the, the target muscle. So I can, I can be more specific with where I'm adding the volume so I don't have that carryover that could potentially compromise you know, my There's recovery. There's a lot of value to that because um, you know, some of these free weights are very taxing on the central nervous system. And totally. it's you know, the, the next workout that you're going to um, uh, you know, get into the, the, the next few days, you're going to feel the, the result of that in terms of like overtraining. And so if I can keep adding more volume uh, to specific areas of my body that I'm trying to really build and develop and, and, and zoom in on, um, you know, this is where machines, I would prefer machines uh, in that case. Oh, th this was absolutely necessary for uh, when I was training for shows, I was training seven days a week, sometimes twice in a day. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing all free weight exercises every time. You'd be fried. No, I'd be absolutely fried. And there was times when I was like, just you know, sitting here talking about machines, I was thinking about a machine what I don't think we've ever talked about that I wish we had or I saw more often. You guys ever done the uh, rear delt fly machine where you lay flat on a bench? Yes. I love that yes. machine. And I used to- Now, and, is this the hammer strength one? Yes. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. So and you, lay, you, lay, yeah, you lay face down. They have like one of those chiropractor mats for your, yes. so you could breathe facing down. And you, and you down. put your arms on yes, your pads? Yes, and then it's on, your elbows are on the pads and you could just, I mean- the, Nothing isolates. That was That's a crazy one. I love, that's why, I, I mean, and to, to isolate a rear delt, which is a small muscle yes. and, and not- Very difficult. Yeah, and really not- overwork or even incorporate much of the rest of the body is really, really tough to do. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, so there, the, it, I was able to do things like that. I was able to come back to the gym on, on in the same day, knowing that I already kind of crushed the weights and then go over and just touch little areas that I wanted to increase the volume, but I didn't want to overstress the rest this, of the body. This is why we recommend, so maps aesthetic is our bodybuilder, one of our bodybuilder maps programs. And it's the programming that Adam used uh, when he became a professional physique competitor. And we put focus sessions in there, right? So you're already hitting the whole body three days a week. But the, but according to the program, if you have a weak body part, you can hit it up to five days a week. The additional two days a week, we recommend in the program, use machines. Mm -hmm. Specifically for this reason right here. Mm -hmm. Easier to isolate, less damaging to the body. Here's an example of, of easier to isolate. I'll use two exercises that biomechanically are almost identical. A pull-up, versus a pull down. If I want to teach someone to isolate their lats, the pull down is going to be way easier to do than the pull up, even if I control for the weight. So mm -hmm. even if I put someone on, which by the way, this is cheating now because I'm using a machine, but even if I put someone on a Gravitron that lifts their body, they could still isolate their lats better when everything's stable and they're just moving their yeah. arms. Yeah. So that the ability to isolate with and what machines, that's really because you would say their trunk is locked in. Right? Everything's locked in. Yeah, yeah. Because when you do a pull up, you're you can't help but no, you know, sway a little more bit skill. more. Yeah. yeah, more involved. You get more muscles wanting to contribute. There's just much more skill. Even a chest press, right? If I'm trying to teach someone to feel just the chest working, they're gonna be get it. They're gonna get that done easier with a chest press machine than they will with a bench press, even though the biomechanics theoretically are identical, right? So. The ability to isolate and target, uh, which by the way, this is oftentimes I would use machine, machines for correctional exercise because I'm trying to teach someone to connect to a muscle and the free weights are just so demanding, uh, even easy exercises for them, just demanding in terms of movement that I just couldn't get them to isolate or target that muscle. I put them on a machine here. This machine's going to do all this other work for you. Now just feel this area and then they'd feel it and then eventually we'd graduate and move to the free weight uh, version of that. Would exercise. you say too, some of the benefits of the the machines, because I know this wasn't on our list, but I'm thinking about it right now is just the, the novelty of it, right? So 
uh, there's there's only so many ways you can do like a a dumbbell shoulder. Oh yeah, press. so many different. But you things. can you know you can do that in a, like weird sure. because of, stimulus from different angles. Right, from different angles, it's still an overhead press, yeah. but the angle that you're doing it from is is different. Is I, I, there's got to be some value to that also? Totally, absolutely. Yeah. Now the next one, this one is one of the main reasons why I would use machines in my training, and that's that some exercises are just impossible to do with free weights. Some exercises would not exist if machines didn't exist. For example, um, a tricep press downs, okay? It sounds very silly, but uh, it, it, that exercise would not exist if machines, the, you would have to literally, and by the way, there were some bodybuilders that tried doing this. They would get those gravity boots and hang upside down yeah. and hold dumbbells and then try and do that's ridiculous <laughs> like a like a tricep, which obviously is like yeah. I, I way think too a, much going on. I say I think a better way of saying this is not impossible. Because I know there's some nerd in here listening right now. Like, yeah, so I could do all those with free weight. Yeah. It's just in, in incredibly less ineffective. Yeah, and inefficient. Just, you have to get yeah. insanely creative. Yes, is it's what just, I would say. Yeah, leg curls is a, is another one. I mean, yeah. I know you could do physio ball leg curls, and I love physio ball leg curls. It's not the same. Not You're the not same. loaded. You know, it, you got to stabilize quite yeah. a bit, and and so yeah, I think leg curls is definitely one that uh, I mean, you could really get those yeah. hamstrings from a different angle. Yeah. What about a leg press? Like, name one free weight leg exercise that doesn't involve the upper body having to be having to somewhat stabilize right yeah. with a leg press your bo your upper body is in the chair you ain't moving the only thing that's moving is your legs yeah. for rehab purposes this has real value i've actually used leg press for rehab and then for for recovery value like somebody hammered deadlifts and squats is not important to them because their legs are already developed or They've had all these hard workouts and they're tired and like, but today's leg day. Should I barbell squat? Ooh, that's going to tax the shit out of your CNS. Why don't we try a leg press? Because everything's locked into place yeah. and it's an easier way to- Well, to also if you have discrepancies uh, left to right too, uh, you know, if you've just come back from, you know, rehab and injury and like- you can you can build and develop safely with one leg, you know, leg pressing at a time to to really kind of you know get them both to respond uh, somewhat at an equal level and, yeah. and build and develop that way. You know, we didn't say it, and it kind of I think falls back in the the isolate thing too is the the priming benefits with machines versus free weights oh, that's too. A good point. You know, that's something that when I'm looking to target a very specific muscle group and I want to prime it before I go do the big compound lift, I'm always doing that with machine. I'm not doing that mm. with a, you know, I'm not priming with a, a free weight exercise that's going to be more taxing and recruit other muscles. You know, that's how I use the adductor, the abductor machine. Yeah. When I had clients that, that needed to work on their uh, abductors, yeah. uh -huh. sometimes I'd have them do an adduct, abductor machine so they could feel the abductors mm -hmm. activate. Then we go do our squats, and they would feel right because otherwise stable. you'd use rubber bands, but that's not as as accessible. So yeah, machines would be pretty yeah, and then, yes, you can do that with bands and whatnot. But you you loading an abductor now. I'm, I'm not. You know, I know I've made fun of abductor machines, but in some ways they're superior. Try loading bands to really develop that kind of strength. Yeah. Yeah, it's abductor machine, you can load the hell out of it. Yes. you know, and you can build lots of strength yeah. uh, in that area. Yeah. So now I don't see it's perfect, but I don't think you can replace it as uh, in that way. That's what I'm saying. Leg extension, we talked about that. Really can't do a leg extension. Now, I like sissy squats yeah, for- the dumbbell, it's just weird. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've seen people do yeah. it. I like sissy weird. squats better than leg extensions for developing the quads, but sissy squats are not appropriate for a lot of people. Yeah. There's a lot of people that that is way too hard. It's not going to work. You're going to have to go do leg extensions if you really want to isolate, uh, you know, the quadriceps. And then most cable exercises, like if I'm doing- you know, chops from different angles, standing chest fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all that kind of stuff. Like because free weights, you only oppose gravity, which is going from top to bottom. Um, you can't, I can't do free weight exercises with necessarily with resistance side to side, mm -hmm. you know, or from up to down. Right. So with machines, those are just exercises you could now, I, now here, and now I'm going to go off a little bit on a, a little bit of a left curve here. There are certain machines that I just find superior to the free weight alternative. Like I love dumbbell pullovers. I put them in every program, most programs. I do them myself, but I'm not going to lie. The Nautilus dumbbell pull, that, excuse me, Nautilus pullover machine 
I have yet to do a free weight version of that exercise that just feels the same. I, I'll mm-hmm. make the case for flies. I think flies on cables are superior. Mm-hmm. The, the the ability for you I to agree. have maximum tension at both ends. And the squeeze. Well, that's what it is. Yep. You feel the drop off almost immediately once you yeah. get, you know, a couple inches. Totally. That's yeah. I mean, dumbbell dumbbell flies are great still. I'm not saying they're they're not they're not good. I definitely utilize them a lot. But I think cable flies are superior because yeah. of the uh, the ability for you to do that, and because the way the uh, the origin insertion is on the mu- on the uh, on the chest, your bit your ability to manipulate all the angles and stuff that you can do with a with a cable fly, you just very very difficult you, to do that. You can with- manipulate the angle while you're doing it. Yeah, you could literally do a lower pack mid pack yeah. upper pack all in the same and set like i said because of the the way the, yeah. the pack is there's a lot of benefit to being able to do oh that. yeah that's that became one of the most popular machines the first ones in fact pumping iron i think that's the only that and a cable low cable row those are the only machines i think you saw on, on a t-bar row that was it yeah. those are the only machines you saw me use in that whole that whole documentary or whatever Um, the next one, we talked about this already, which is easy volume, less stress on the body. Mm -hmm. If you want to add volume to your workout, get a little bit more of a pump, add different angles. Machines allow you to do this easier than free weights because they're less stressful on the body. They just are like, if I go and do a back machine workout with three different exercises, even if I'm doing compound lifts or whatever, it's just not as taxing on the body. I'm going to recover faster. Uh, it's, it's going to be shorter recovery period. So if I'm like, you know, if I'm training hard and I'm pushing my body limit and I want to add an additional five sets to my routine, I could either do two sets of a free weight exercise or one set, or I could add five sets of machines, yeah. which has some value. Well, this, this is how I use machines, um, now more than ever is, and it's more so actually when I overreach. Right, so I'm, I I build my routine right, especially right now where my training volume is lower. It's very maps anabolic esque, yeah. uh, but I we openly admit all the time that even being experienced trainers, we still all have a tendency to overreach. So if I'm getting ready to go into you know day two of maps anabolic and I've got all these barbell movements that I have planned or written out to do, and on Monday. I decided to press some PR numbers or overreach or do a little more than I probably should have, and I'm really sore still. I, I might pivot and replace some of those barbell movements on that on that Wednesday workout for machines. So I find it really valuable for when I when I've overreached instead of increasing the risk and doing even more damage when I'm when I'm still that sore, I'll make a pivot and go to like a machine workout. Yeah, if I'm, I'm if I'm just looking for a pump uh, with minimal damage, it's it's machines. Just yeah. always, it's just a lot easier. In fact, I can train. Just to illustrate this uh, even further, I can train to failure more often on machines than I can with free weights because of the the damage less difference. damage for sure less damage. Like I can go to failure on a leg press on a you know a, a machine press a machine row, um, and I would say in a, if if a ten was the free weight failure comparable exercises, machines would be like a six or a seven. That's a pretty big difference. You no, know, that's no. you're, you're talking a third. Less damage, the body is what I experience. Well, and even uh, from a hybrid perspective, like I love training for performance and love compound lifts. And, you know, to be able to have compound lifts and do those first and then follow it up with machines to add more volume so I can build and, 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 and develop my muscles a little bit more effectively. Like I love to, to yeah. incorporate machines, you know, in the mix. Now here, this last one is my favorite. And this one, I think people don't um, appreciate enough. But if you're advanced and you love to train, you pay attention to this, you can get real creative. Machines allow you to have an adjustable resistance curve. So earlier I talked about dumbbell pullovers versus the Nautilus pullover machine. Here's why I think I like the dumb, the pullover machine more than dumbbells. When I'm across a bench doing a dumbbell pullover, all the most of the resistance is at the stretch. Yeah. Once I get up here, there's like no resistance. The resistance is my tricep supporting the, the, the dumbbell. I have no lat squeeze in that position. I have to actively try to squeeze my lats, but it's not the same. When you do a pullover machine, the resistance is all the way through. And when I come down to the bottom, it's the, I have to hold the squeeze as hard as I held the stretch, which makes it way more effective. Well, this is the case I was trying to make with the crossover. Yes. Right? The cable crossover is the same way. When you're doing a dumbbell chest fly, I mean, the real benefit is in that stretched position. When you 
as soon as you get, like Justin said, just a few inches the other direction, it's you know you're no longer opposing gravity at the the same level that you were in in the complete stretch position. So you, it's not the strength curve is completely different. Where in cables, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so the same weight all yeah, the way through, all the way through, yeah. which, and I think that that's a, a tremendous value is, is, is that point. Now here's where it gets real fun. And this is where I'm talking to, to more advanced lifters. There's lots of machines. You'll see a pulley that is pulling either a strap or a cable and it'll, ha and most people don't touch this because they don't, they don't understand it. They don't know what to do, but you're able to adjust the strength curve on the pulley and they'll have little mm -hmm. places that you could do this. This is where it gets real cool. So I'll use a preacher curl as an example. So, you know, like there'd be a preacher curl machine. So my elbows are sitting on the pad. I'm doing the curl. And what I can do with the pulley, and what'll happen is you'll see the pulley and it'll be funny shaped. It won't be a perfect circle. It'll kind of be oval, okay? So what that tells you is at some point, there's going to be more resistance on the pulley than in other places. And so what you could do with some of these machines is I could make the preacher curl heaviest at the bottom. So this is where it's hardest and then it gets easier at the top. Or I can make it heaviest at the top. So it's light at the bottom, heavy on the squeeze. And there's a lot of machines that allow you to do this. Most people don't touch the pulleys because they have no idea. Well, and by the way, this mm -hmm. now makes that exercise novel. Super so novel. if you always do a preacher curl on a standard, you know, preacher machine, that's the you know same strength curve yes. that you can't manipulate. I mean, and that's all you do, right? So you do that all the time. You simply messing with that now makes that exercise novel. And there's, and we talk about the importance of novelty when training that in itself already gives ben more benefit yep. for building muscle. And now one of the reasons why we'll go back to hammer strength. One of the reasons why hammer strength became so popular wasn't because you could load it with free weights. The, the, the fact that you load it with free weights or a weight stack doesn't matter. What Hammer Strength did really well is they knew what strength curve would feel the best, and that's how they designed the machine. So, mm -hmm. for example, one of the more popular uh, Hammer Strength machines is the chest press. Okay, so you're, you're sitting in the chest press thing, and you push, and then the weight moves up, and it moves down. The resistance and the stretch position is the lightest. Mm -hmm. The heavy, the more you push out, the heavier it gets. Now people like this because we tend to be weakest at the bottom, right. strongest at the top. Yeah, so you stack more weight on there. So you stack weight, <laughs> and it feels good to yeah. get heavy here and light here, right? right? If you look at their their row machines, you'll also see this a similar you know uh, design shoulder press, similar type of design where it gets it's lighter at the bottom, heavier at the top. And this is why people like them because the strength curve felt really cool right. on the body. It felt really good. So I like hammer strength, but I really like, and again, nobody does this, but you go to a gym, there's selectorized equipment where you can adjust the pulley. You can make your leg extensions heavy at the bottom, at the top. You can make back exercises heavier at the bottom or the top or the middle. You could, you could take an exercise, do six sets, and it'd be six different strength curves. Yeah. I used to do this all the time, and it feels really awesome. You can't do that with free weights. With free weights, this would be a different movement. It's yeah, it's a different exercise. There, at that there, point. There's no, you know how I would adjust the strength curve on a on a with free weights. I'd have to like move my body. So like, I could do a lateral standing, or I could do a lateral, you know, laying sideways on an incline bench. Yeah, you get to go against flat. gravity somehow <laughs> yeah, in, in a dude. weird way. Yeah. yeah well, and that it's actually impossible with certain like you can't do bicep curls that way. You can't do a, you can't manipulate the the strength curve with dumbbells. No, on you'd a, have on. to like lay on a bench and do something weird or I don't know. Yeah, you can get the spider curl angle, but to come from top to bottom. Them no. and get the you have to hang upside down yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah. which is not happening right that's pretty ridiculous you imagine doing either. curls hanging down your head will explode Instagram with all the people pressure. will do it but yeah yeah so. but huge benefits though to certain muscles like that that you don't get a chance to manipulate that and machines provide that 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 ability to do that yeah. so again another example of where uh, machines can be superior. Are there certain machines that you, maybe more so you, Adam, are there certain machines you just, uh, you said the the rear delt one. Yeah. Are there any others that you just love? Like if you see it, you're like, I'm going to do that. Yeah, no, the, the rear delt, the rear delt fly. I mean, I, and I love a pec deck type of mach machine, mm -hmm. you know, or cable crossover. You is, like the hammer strength row. Every oh, time we would work yeah, out, that I would. I love, I love. And that is actually the opposite of what you said with the. Um, it was lighter at the bottom. Yeah, it's heavy. It's heavy to get it going. But then as you get it in, you lighter. Can, it's lighter and you get the squeeze. And so, you know, if you had enough strength to get it off uh, the the initial you know momentum going, mm -hmm. then you get this great squeeze and you could really load it. I used to get a, a, an incredible pump on my back from that the ISO row, the hammer strength yes, ISO row. As Dorian Yates mm -hmm. made that one pop. Oh, I love. Yeah, I love. And they have so many handle position. So yeah. if I'm you know Anything more that's upper, chest supported like that for rows is appreciated. Yeah, great, great, great yeah. uh machine. I have I have a few and they're all like uh, kind of weird, obscure ones, but that's because you can't do them necessarily free weights. Like a donkey calf raise. Hmm. 
I, you know, otherwise I have to tell my, like a guy to sit on my back while I'm doing this. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> a guy? Why not a guy? Yeah, why not a couple girls? I, I mean, I guess you could I, that's too, what but I, that's what I, I feel like the, I mean, is, as, uh, as weird as it would sound, I feel like a guy would understand more than, hey, <laughs> would you mind bro, sitting on my back? While yeah, I you, they would probably receive it more or yeah. better in the gym than, than a couple like, girls. You pervert? No. <laughs> so hammer strength, excuse me, uh, jump in on this donkey set. calf raise, tibialis raise, tibialis, there's a tibialis oh, yeah, raise yeah. machine. I used to love using that with clients when they had um, shin splints because tibialis raises without that, are, it's kind of weird. Yeah. You know, you have to stand on your heels on a block. People slide down and it just doesn't work. There's tibialis you used raises. You do those against the wall and, and it's a little weird. And, and then there was a, there's a gold, the one on Monterey, and I only ever saw this machine in a powerlifting magazine. Ed Cohn, who was one of the greatest powerlifters of all time, yeah. talked about using this hammer strength grip strengthening machine. You ever seen it? Uh -uh. Where you load the plates and it's got like handles like this and you you squeeze it with your hands and you could do one finger at a time and do all kinds of crazy things oh, on wow. it. if i see that in a gym yeah i'd love to use that i'm using that every single time That'd so be cool so there you have it those are the reasons why machines are sometimes better than free weights look you can find us on social media you can find justin on instagram at mind pump justin adam at mind pump adam you can find me on twitter at mind pump sal also we have free guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal you can find all of those, and again, they're all free, at mindpumpfree.com.